Coming up this week on the News at Rider. A beloved professor is remembered. The tragic death of a student shocks both campuses and a unity vigil was held on both campuses. Welcome to the News at Rider. I'm Kelly Dixon. Rider University lost a beloved professor this past week. Dr. David Rebovich suffered a heart attack while teaching understanding politics. The university held a memorial service for Dr. Rebovich this past Thursday. Nicholas Balsey spoke at the memorial service and interviewed students about their experiences with Dr. Rebovich after the memorial service. I find myself at times when other people may be crying or, or sad, uh, I, have a, I have a bit of a smile on my face because I'm, I'm thinking about him. I'm thinking about what he would be saying about the moments that we're now living without him. I'm thinking about the future. I'm thinking about all the things that I can do now because I've met him and I knew him that I don't think I would have been able to do four years ago. Uh, yeah, th there are a lot of positives it, that we were able sad, to spend our last few, our, our whole college career pretty much yeah, with him. It's, it's sad, but it's, but at the same time, I feel like I learned a lot from him. I feel like I, I got as much as I could possibly could out of a four-year relationship with him. And now I think God is saying, you met, you met a wonderful person that I put here on this earth for you. Now go out there and live for him. Take the lessons that he taught you. Take every piece of advice that he gave you and use it in furthering your career in reaching the peak of the mountain that he helped inspire you, uh, you and motivate you to climb and do it. He was always my favorite professor. You could get up at 8 in the morning, be right front row. You wanted to be in the front of his class and he was just, he would teach you so much. You would learn so much from him and he was just the most hilarious person, so full of energy. And it was just, uh, just good times every time. I, I mean, just the fact that, you know, today when I had the chance to actually speak at the memorial, uh, the audience obviously saw me up on the podium getting choked up. Tears are coming out of my eyes. I'm sitting at the seat. It was just because all of that emotion came over me. We, we saw more than a lot of people saw. I mean, unfortunately, you know, Ryder was open. Ryder was operating. There wasn't as many people as I would have thought from Ryder there at the funeral. But we saw all of that. And for that, just, it all just hit me at this reception where, or not the reception, at the uh, ceremony where all of these people from Ryder were there. And this is just like the summary, like, you know, he's really on it and, and, and it hit me. So, I mean, I just think being able to see that was a, a real honor. We were able to pay our, our final respects. For the complete interview, stay tuned for On the Issues with Nicholas Ballacy. On Wednesday morning, freshman Justin Warfield of Columbia, Maryland died from what appeared to be a mixture of drugs and alcohol, according to the Mercer County Prosecutor's Office. Authorities have arrested 19-year-old Kieran Hunt of Piscataway in the death of Justin Warfield. Hunt is a sophomore at Westminster. He has been charged with strict liability for a drug-induced death as well as distribution of heroin, which is a first-degree offense, said the Mercer County Prosecutor's Office. Each year, Protestant Campus Ministries plans a number of midnight runs. This Wednesday was the first of these worthwhile causes. I was able to get to see the preparation work that goes into making Midnight Run successful. Protestant Campus Ministries and other Rider students got together in preparation for the Midnight Run. They prepared peanut butter and jelly and cold cut sandwiches to distribute to the homeless and needy in New York City. Bags were packed with fruit cups, cookies, juices, and sandwiches. Students and leaders left from the Guild Chapel at 7 p.m. to head to New York and did not plan on returning to Ryder until 3 a.m. The group also planned on distributing clothes to the homeless. Every third Wednesday of the month, an organization on Ryder's campus sponsors a midnight run and students pour out in support. For the news at Ryder, this has been Kelly Dixon. If you are interested in helping with a future midnight run, contact Reverend Nancy or any PCM officer. The Lawrenceville campus held a vigil service on Wednesday in the Cavall Room to bring the community together as a whole during a time of discrimination. Anthony Santiago was there and has more. The service was held at the Cavall Room on Wednesday night, a candlelight vigil service where different people from the Ryder community came together as one. They sat by candlelight and sang songs for unity. Different people from SGA also spoke as well. 
And what we had here tonight was a candlelight vigil in remembrance of the hate crimes that occurred on campus this past Sunday. But not only in remembrance of that, but in light of forming a community here at Ryder and moving together as one community for future events. Dean Campbell also had a few words to say on the subject. I think this, I think this uh, short service, and it was brief, but it was important, um, I think it reminded us that we can't sit back we can't sit back and watch and just think that the next person is going to take over and going to do the things that we have to all say ourselves and stand up for ourselves uh, when we see injustice and that we have to take action as individuals. I think that's what this service is like. And part of the symbols of the light is uh, to show that, that the only way we can have light, the only way we can, we, can, we can move away from the darkness of injustice is for all of us to take action and, and have the energy that's given to us by the light. I'm hoping they go back to the dorms and say, we will not stand for any injustices upon anyone on this campus, whether they have the same color, the same religion, the same sex as I am. I want this whole campus to form one bond and become one community, so if anything ever happens to this again, it will not be tolerated. At the Cavala Room, this has been Anthony Santiago, Channel 20, News at Ryder. If you have any information regarding the hate crime in G Hall, please contact Public Safety or the Lawrenceville Police Department. Coming up this Saturday, on DeVore Photography will be in the BLC for Senior Pictures. The pictures will be taking place from 8 to 12 in the BLC Room 259. The Saturday shuttle will be running from 1 to 9 p.m. The shuttle goes to various locations throughout the area. Schedules can be picked up at the BLC Information Desk. On Sunday, the Lawrenceville campus will be flooded with prospective students and their families as the campus will be having an open house. The open house goes from 12 to 4 in the afternoon. Daly's Field will play host to intramural softball starting at noon. All are welcome to participate. On Sunday night, the BLC Theater will be airing a special Sunday movie, Hairspray, at 7.30 in the BLC Theater. On Wednesday evening, the pub held an open mic night called Brownwater. This forum provides an opportunity for Ryder students to express themselves in art. Anthony Santiago has more. Brownwater is a night of fun, music, and art at the pub. Every Wednesday night, starting about 9 o'clock, the fans filter into the pub to listen to the rising artists here on campus. Soloists, bands, and artists perform during an open mic night while the fans suck up the entertainment. Performers can read original works of art, sing original songs, or even pay tribute to their favorite bands such as Sublime, Matt Nathanson, or others during the Brownwater occasion. I said, remember that loving is what I got. I said, remember that loving is what I got. I said, remember that loving is what I got. What it's like, like to get lost in the moment. And pretend I don't have to leave. Brownwater's attendance has been boosting greatly recently as fans from campus come to support their friends or just enjoy the time and clap along with the music. Even the best of all times, sometimes, even the wrong words seem to run. Ultimately, Brownwater has been a great success at the pub and hopefully will continue to grow. This has been Anthony Santiago with Brownwater, Channel 20, News at Ryder. This past week in sports, on Sunday, Fairfield defeated the men's soccer team 1-0. Monmouth University shut out the men's tennis team 7-0 in action on Tuesday. And the field hockey team was also shut out 1-0 by Lafayette. The Bronx hope to rebound this weekend, as on Friday, the ice hockey team takes on the University of Scranton at 8 p.m. at Locust Ice Rink. The men's soccer team will be away while they take on St. Peter's. The field hockey team will be at Monmouth University for their game, and the volleyball team will be at Siena for their matchup. On Saturday, the men's and women's tennis teams will be playing St. Francis at home at noon. The ice hockey team will face off against Lafayette College at 9.15 at Locust Ice Rink. The golf team will be playing in the Mount St. Mary's Fall Classic, and the volleyball team will be in Manhattan for their matchup. This Sunday, the field hockey team will be away, taking on Sacred Heart. The women's soccer team will be at 
Canisius for their game, and the men's team will be in Manhattan for their game. And now we'll look at this weekend's weather forecast. Friday will have a high of 76 with a chance of evening thunderstorms. Saturday will be a beautiful day. It will be mostly sunny with a high of 70. Sunday will be 74 with no clouds in sight. And on Monday it will be mostly sunny with a high of 73. From all of us here at Channel 20, we would like to wish the Ryder community a fun and safe weekend. We'll see you next time.